everybody, how's it going? It's a Daily Shooter, and this is going to be a quick impromptu video to kind of address some of the questions, comments, and concerns that I got last night here on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, even in my personal email from people who were saying, hey, have you heard about this de facto ammo ban uh, from the ATF? Well, I hadn't heard about anything, so I panicked a little bit, clicked on the links that they sent me, and I read the articles, and then I did a little bit of further research, uh, and I realized that, you know what, there is nothing to worry about as far as a de facto ammo ban. Okay, I'll go over the details here in just a second, but I do want to kind of calm people's fears. There is nothing as far as an ammo ban that would actually be going on here, okay? That's, that's first and foremost. The second thing is that the worst possible case scenario is that there would be sort of a delay in the new manufacturing of ammunition and possibly a price increase, but that would be the worst case scenario. And currently the ATF is working with the ammunition manufacturing industry to kind of rectify the situation or find common ground on the situation okay so they are currently working on it and they do realize that there would be some type of a conflict with the industry which would directly affect the atf as well as the federal government state and local law enforcement as well as the recreational shooter this affects everybody because this would be a new federal regulation so basically what the atf did is they reclassified uh, nitrocellulose, wetted nitrocellulose, excuse me, is a high explosive. Well, nitrocellulose is something that's used commonly by the ammunition manufacturing industry to make smokeless powder. So if they regulate wetted nitrocellulose, which is how the industry transports and stores uh, nitrocellulose, then obviously we're going to have some shakeup because transportation regulations are going to change, storage regulations are going to change, and I can speak to this a little bit because that was actually my job for a long period of time was uh, the storage and transportation of high explosives and hazardous chemicals. That's actually what I did. So I can kind of speak a little bit to some of the changes that would have to be made here if this implementation were to affect the ammunition manufacturing industry. Okay, so by reclassifying wetted nitrocellulose as a high explosive, here's what changes. Okay, the cost and regulation on transportation changes because when you're transporting um, hazardous chemicals or high explosives, everything within that truck has to be regulated. It has to go through further documentation. It has to be properly loaded, meaning that now because it's a high explosive, it can't be near any other certain things, including oxygen tanks or anything else that would cause it to be even a larger explosion. It can't be uh, near anything that would be considered basically bad to act against that high explosive. So anything that would increase the explosion, anything that would cause the explosion to occur, uh, basically you have to change everything with the way that you load the truck, the, the way actually that you put things on the truck, physically put it on the truck has to change. So all of the transportation changes, okay, the way the trucks have to be labeled on the outside changes and the cost goes way up. Okay, so when you're talking about transporting something that falls under uh, one regulation. It might cost a little bit of money. Even if you talk about, okay, let's talk about this. When you get ammunition in the mail, okay, when you get ammunition in the mail, sometimes you'll see that white and black sticker on the side of it, okay? And it'll have whatever type of code depending on what you ordered on it. Uh, even if you're buying, let's say, smokeless powder or something like that, it'll have a, a little diamond sticker on it and it'll tell you some more information about what's in the package. Well, it costs more to ship that package to you. It costs more because of that label. Well, same thing happens with the truck. Once you put that label on the truck, it costs more to ship it. Okay, so the ammunition manufacturing industry is going to have to eat that cost. Okay, that cost is obviously going to be trans, uh, basically it's going to be pushed onto the consumer because they're not going to be able to eat their profits. Okay, so that is what increases the cost of ammunition. Well, by reclassifying as a high explosive, that also changes the way that you can store it. So if they're storing wet, uh, uh, wet nitrocellulose right now, in the way that they're storing it is going to have to change as well. What is around the storage is going to have to change. What type of storage is going to have to change. The handling while within that storage, bringing it from the truck and to that storage, all of these things will have to change. Um, up to and including just the simple type of container that it's in while it's in the container that it's in will have to change. So you have to remember that all of these things, regulations affect transportation and storage. Well, if they can't store it the way they do right now, they're gonna to have to come up with a new storage. Well, that's not really hard. I mean, I can install new storage for high explosives uh, in, in a little bit of time, okay? But it is gonna cause a slight delay in the way that they're gonna be able to get that uh, nitrocellulose to the actual factory line in order to make the ammunition. So we could be looking at a delay in that manufacturing process if this were to go through because they're gonna to have to meet those new federal regulations in order to handle that now high explosive, okay? So, they're still gonna be able to get it. 
they would still be able to transport it, they would still be able to store it as long as they're within those new regulations and all of us would still get our ammunition. But in worst case scenario, it's gonna cost them more money, it's gonna slow down manufacturing and it's gonna cost us more money as a consumer. But remember, this applies federally, which means that all ammunition, all ammunition manufacturers are gonna kinda of have to eat this up, which means it's gonna trans, uh, translate to more costs for the federal government, more costs for law enforcement, more costs for anybody that's gonna purchase uh, ammunition okay so now I, I the one thing that I was sort of confused on was I saw people were talking about imported uh, powders versus domestic powders that's one thing that I would suggest you go and you read on a little bit more about I'll put what links I do have in the description box but I suggest that you you know you read up as much as you can because that was one thing that I was a little bit sketchy on I didn't know about imported powders versus uh, powders that were made uh, and transported dom domestically. Okay, obviously, if you're talking about CFR, it's going to affect everything that crosses our highways and is handled within the country. So that's something to consider, but there is no ammo ban. Uh, this is definitely something to watch, but again, like I said at the beginning of the video, the ATF is actually already working with the industry, with the manufacturing industry, in, in order to rectify the situation that that would cause. Okay, so hopefully we can get out of you know any type of delay, we can get out of any type of um, hike, price hike. And, you know, I'll, I'll keep an eye on that. I'll try and watch this as it goes and keep you guys abreast of any news that might happen because of this. But first thing I want to say is don't worry about it. No need to go out. There's not going to be any shortage of ammunition. I think that they're going to work this through. It's too big of a deal. And again, it affects the federal government and everybody else. It affects our military even. So it's something to consider right there. I think that they're going to work this out. That's just my personal prediction. But hey, you know, that's I think, I think when it comes to their own interests, they might work a little bit harder to uh, rectify the situation. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching. Please like, subscribe. Have a great day.